He can be a bit peculiar. It's an affable chat with Jack the Garden Cat. Here at Mark's Ridge, we do all of our bottling ourselves, and we're going to take uh, all of our Pinot Noir. This is a 2009 Pinot Noir. It's been in barrel now for a couple of years, and now it's ready to go into the bottles. We had looked at a lot of properties uh, throughout Oregon, and we realized that uh, owning a vineyard was a lot of work. And we kind of did some research, and we said, whoa, I don't know that we want to own a vineyard, because that's a lot to do. And we have our bottles, empty bottles, right here. We're going to have our sparger, we're going to put nitrogen in the bottles. The bottles are going to then go over to the, the filler. We're going to put the bottles on, we're going to fill up. Then after they go into the filler, they're going to come over here to this station, which we have corks, automatic corker, holds a vacuum, chinka, 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 chink. Bottles all get corked off. 1,200 feet. We're on the east side of the Willamette Valley, so we get a little more rain, a little cooler temperatures. So um, we'll get good sugar levels on a good year, but we also have high acidity, which works well, especially if you leave a little sugar in your wines, then you can uh, you can have that nice balance with the acidity and the sugar. And after the corking. They'll come over here, and then we'll have a label. This is the trigger mechanism. Oh, you got to put it down. Okay, got it. And I'll just reel around like that. Oh, and there's your label. Oh, should be perfectly okay. spaced, and then you can just okay. lift it and put it over here. And just put this down like that. Uh huh. Uh -huh. There you go. Now you're an expert labeler. All right. And then we'll do the, the foiling. And someone will get to do it with their arm, and it's like, oh, it's really hard. We kept looking, and we came upon this piece of property, which was just spectacular. It was so beautiful. And lo and behold, it had 25 acres of vineyard. Called Polly Lamb Foils. And they go into, I'm trying to get the seam kind of to the back, because there's a little seam. Uh, yeah. And I like to do that so that it looks prettier pretty on the front. And then you just lift it over here. You grow it. This is good for you. This is good. Yeah. Exercise. Yeah. It's not hard. You can nice and slow down. Yeah. And, uh, okay. It's a red wine, like the traditional Pinots. It comes in from harvest. It's destemmed, and it goes into large fermenter bins for fermenting. And when we ferment, we add our wine yeast, and the yeast is gobbling up the sugars, the natural sugars in the wine, and converting it to alcohol. Basically. The color of the wine comes from the grape skins. So the longer the juice is in touch with the, with the skin, the deeper the color. So that's why the traditional Pinot Noir is very deep red, because it ferments on the skins. So that's anywhere from 10 days to two weeks. Whereas this, we brought the Pinot Noir grapes in, we put it in a cold soak for 24 hours, and then pressed the juice. And this is the color that the uh, juice gets after being 24 hours in touch with the, uh, the grape skin. So it's up to the winemaker, especially with the lighter wines, to determine how much sugar he wants to have remaining in the wine. If he wants to keep a little sugar in it, and keep it a little bit sweet, we have to stop the fermentation. We keep tasting it and tasting it. <laughs> and when it's to the level that he likes it, he'll say, okay, this is where I want it to stop. He can be a bit peculiar, to the point and kind of wry. But underneath that fur exterior is a sweet home-minded guy. With coffee catnip and conversation, he's a smooth feline sensation. It's an affable chat with Jack the Garden Cat.